Hello, hello, and welcome to another wonderful episode of Submitted for Your Approval, the weekly card review show for Collective, the community-created card game where you make the cards. I'm joined today by my faithful co-host, Grief. Howdy, folks. And my enigmatic co-host, Emptyful. Hello, everyone. Again, you can send adjective suggestions in the comments. Um, let's jump straight in to the uh, accepted submissions. These are cards that got in last week. Starting with Mystic Flare is a five drop neutral portal from Black Rift with scout two neutral cards. And whenever you play a non-native card while this is in hand, it gets negative one cost. Um, I think obviously you guys know why I'm talking about this, but I'm excited because this actually marks something important for Black Rift. We have a card that cares about non-native actions. Finally. I mean, it also cares about non-native units, but we finally have some payoff for running non-native actions, which also means you can do some creative stuff. You can leverage your debris in a new way. You can actually play the debris uh, to get the little ping effect in the thing. Um, you know, you get your splish, splash, sploosh kind of stuff. Uh, there's a lot of different things I think you could do with this, and that's why I think it's pretty interesting, and I'm just excited because that's something I've always wanted for Black Rift. Thank you, Astros, for finally making it happen. Um, as for the effect, it gets you card advantage and works as a really solid payoff for non-neutrals. And these things also kind of chain into each other. You have multiple copies of them, maybe via sketch time, maybe via your painter. Um, these can uh, discount each other and just get you into a really happy place where you're just having just a really solid advantage engine. Grief, what do you think of this? Um, well, you're putting me in an awkward position where I basically just say, yeah, maybe in an action spam deck, but outside of that, this is kind of useless. <laughs> and even in an action spam deck, I mean, the amount of useful neutral cards is kind of limited, and most of them are either extremely high value neutral cards or just create more non native token esque things. I mean, Ring the Bell gets you like two triggers off of it, so. So we can probably play this as a three to two cost card turn three, turn four-ish, turn two, uh, maybe it's soonest. But the payoff is kind of awkward. There is not a really decent-ish neutral pool. There's cards you can scout that are probably worth it in the metagame, but it's kind of all over the place in what it can give you. So to put it actually into a deck that relies on non-native synergies, this is kind of the worst one. <laughs> Well, I mean, the, the the thing you got to bear in mind is is non-native matters was never supposed to be a competitive deck. It was supposed to be a goofy shenanigans, improv to win type thing. I think that plays into it. Bear in mind, we do have stuff that's even decent value cards like Hit and Run that do throw a cheap, uh, cheap non-native into your hand. And so it does let you kind of leverage off of that. Um, I don't know. I think it still has potential. What do you think, Empty? Um, I have to agree with Grief here. The neutral pool tends to have a lot of duds. Um, I'm not sure exactly what it looks like post-rotation, um, but especially for something you have to build around like this, I don't think it'll be very competitive. But I mean, this is kind of like the ideal stranger side <laughs> card. There's <laughs> just tons of tons of non-native synergy. I'm not sure it really needs to be a competitive card to just be a fun meme build so yeah and that's my argument i don't think it's the most powerful thing but i think it's kind of what i it's what i want to see or it's what i really enjoy seeing from the realm that i designed so um and i would love to see other people play around with with this space as long as we could get it in because i mean obviously these cards are supposed to be just casual funsies cards um yeah the issue is though i mean we can make the point for every bad card that is casual funsies but it still doesn't get us anywhere <laughs> So you're not going to say anything about cube and running this with flips? No. <laughs> okay, you should build a cube screen to decide. In cube, I wouldn't even play this. Let's do the mono create a card cube where every card creates cards. And in that case, yeah, sure, but then scout and scout is also affecting cube and cube is in card creator format, so therefore you're getting the entire card pool of the legacy card pool. yeah it'd be nice if we had like ways to restrict that pool it'd be so good <laughs> for cube builders okie dokie then alerts in the alleys is a one drop mind event from Mortstall, realm of the dead things with bounce target unit and put it into play before combat 
So this, folks, is a flicker effect, something we don't really have too much of in the pool. Um, and it's a pretty interesting one at that because it actually keeps it out of play. Um, well, we have a couple flicker effects, but not a flicker effect like this, like the flicker and then it comes back later. Um, obviously, you could synergize this with Agile and Ambush, but I think it actually shuts off Vigilant because it's not in play when the Vigilant trigger would go off. So that actually does have some interesting implications. It's one of the few ways which Vigilant is worse. Um, and of course, this is more blue stuff in Wardstall. So that's cool. Empty, uh, Grief, what do you think of this? Poor guard, we'll probably see it play. Um, it is kind of a pseudo soft removal card that can get aggressive decks to push for more, uh, for more damage. It can be a sort of protection card because you're bouncing the card, it's in your hand, meaning that you can reach your entrance abilities, you can cause weird shenanigans of bouncing the card, draw, um, drawing, uh, discarding it, and then putting it into play before combat. Because it's not saying particularly that it has to return from hand into play. So there are probably ways to break it. And it's more or less the, these kinds of interactions that I'm actually looking for when it comes to building a deck or utilizing this card in a deck, how you can creatively use the self-bounce mechanic mm -hmm. to push for more value. Yeah. Empty, what do you think? Yeah, I quite like this. There's a lot of interesting ways to build around it, like Ruth brought up. Uh, maybe if you have something that needs like discard fuel, you can bounce one of your units, discard it, and then return it from the grave. Um, mm. And then, of course, like at a base level, you can just use this as an exhaust if you're just running like some uh, aggro or mid range deck and need to get an extra yeah. damage. Mm -hmm. And you can use it to like bounce one of your units, maybe, and then play it again to re trigger its summon. So it could be a really expensive summon re trigger. I think it'll put it into play, not play it. So it's an entrance re trigger. No, I mean, you return the unit to your hand and then just play it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh. That's clever. I like that. It's not really something you want to build around, per se. So yeah, because it's, I, I, that's it's right. worse than you, summon return. When you return. put it into play before combat, you forget that you can just do what a normal bounce card would do. Yeah. So yeah, that does give it a lot of a versatile edge if you do. And the the combat. really weird thing is, if you do that and then your opponent removes it, it'll come back again. So yeah, you could mix this into sort of a weird mishmash, like written comeback, all sorts of other stuff. That is cute. Those are some interactions I didn't think of. Yeah, I really like this card for its versatility. So I'm excited. I don't know. I might even I might even pick it up and play with it. Okay. <clears throat> Gap, Will of the World is a nine drop neutral A10 elemental fish horror from Gemmel with if you have more seven or more cards in your hand, this costs two less. If you have 10 or more, this is untargetable. If you have 13 cards in hand, if you have 13 cards in hand that share a tribe with this, cost zero. So, really goofy card from the eight plus cost fish uh, side of Gemmel. Uh, reminds me in art style almost of kind of like a Yu-Gi-Oh aesthetic <laughs> just with the head the, with the, like the head and the spine part obviously there's not all that ridiculous level of detail but the art is still amazing I really enjoy it um, quirky card this once you have a bunch of cards in your hand and it wants you to get to 13 cards so you can play a big free elemental fish horror obviously Things that share tribes with Gap Will of the World includes Gap Will of the World. So you can um, actually use this to um, <clears throat> uh, get out another copy of them if you want a big spooky untargetable fish. Um, besides that, it's just, I don't, I'm not able to quite piece this together yet. I honestly feel, and this is probably a, a controversial opinion, this would benefit from having like shape shift. <laughs> uh, just because it's a nine drop, that's, you know, we don't have a bunch of shapeshifters over at nine. Uh, Empty, what do you think of this? 
Yeah, so I really like the idea behind this card. Like this huge payoff card for having a ton of cards in hand is really cool. And like that final effect is like awesome. I would love to build a deck around it. Uh, but I think the current iteration of this is pretty weak. Um, it's only really, it's like decent if you have 10 or more cards in your hand, you can cast this for seven and it's untargetable. But honestly, even that, it's not really that good. In a lot of situations, you'd be better off just playing Menace or something that has like more impact on the board and can't just get chump blocked down. And then like that final clause, uh, really cool, but that is like impossible to get off. It's so difficult, especially with the tribes that this does have, like Elemental, Fish, and Horror none of them have that many <laughs> units um and like you have to have the perfect hand with no actions in it it's just going to be like that's going to be an uphill battle to well, and you only get to off. play one card off of it before your hand size slips back under tw under 13 yeah so if you have multiple copies of this it doesn't work like if your hand goes down to 12 like you said it, you can't do it yeah, like, well, uh, yeah, you could get another big this, but I, I just, I don't know, maybe I haven't been following, maybe the Gemmel Fish are the thing to play with this, but I haven't really paid too close There's attention. There's like one to other one. Yeah. yeah, okay. Grief, what do you think of this? Utterly unimpressed. Um, I think there is some hype around that card regarding elemental decks, but that's, I just heard about it. Never seen one, maybe because of the Wienmowski uh, and the Re Re Reflector package and whatever the deck actually also does. Uh, yada yada yada. Uh, to keep it short, I that's the second big cost fish card that I was, and I'm very I really want more big fish cards and the latest two big fish cards. I am completely and utterly disappointed in. So yeah, I'm very much having no hopes for this card. Probably it has some weird brokenish interactions because of the elemental cost reduction to zero and triggering a billion different uh, when elemental enters play effects. But outside of that, fuck, can we, can, can we get to the next card, please? <laughs> yeah. That deck already got nerfed too. <laughs> Yeah, sorry, sorry, uh, sorry to dump on the rare and call it a waste of a slot, guys. <laughs> nah, I'm sure it, it, it'll find a home, hopefully. Okay, okay. now for the uh, active submissions. These are cards that are available for you to vote on the subreddit right now. And I mixed up the adjectives accepted and active in both directions this episode. Um, <laughs> door to a familiar place is a one-drop mind door from nowhere in particular with shuffle your hand into your deck, then draw the card shuffled. It's obviously a very, very quirky card. Um, and I like this, obviously, because if this were to get in, this would be the only card I designed to get, I did not design to get in with my art. And I find that hilarious. What does this synergize with? This synergizes with fish. This synergizes to a limited extent with the painter uh, slash sketch time version of non-native. Um, this synergizes with stuff that cares about things moving around in general, moving, changing zones. Um, this can do a lot of really, really goofy stuff. And I think the potential is uh, pretty interesting. And obviously the it's it's a meme. And it's been doing pretty well as a meme. It's sitting at like six. Grief, what do you think of this? Love it because I was at I was there when the card was basically created. Um the issue was, yeah, uh, to make fish better, we need more wheel effects and Let's be honest, go to elsewhere, which this is actually referencing, even on flavor text. Um, it does jack shit for the archetype <laughs> well, when it comes to doing fish support, especially for legacy. So the idea was like, yeah, why not put a wheel into the game that just draws the same cards? Because all fish cards want to be redrawn, especially fish dragon synergy. And like, yeah, Rujek out of going out of his way. Yeah, let's do this one. Reword the art. Uh, let's do door to a familiar, uh, familiar place. Here's the card. I love it because it's just playable on one specific deck, actually. <laughs> and, I... You know, so, I mean, I, I'm running, I just run a fun little casual non native support, and I run door to elsewhere, and I would run this alongside it because I like being able to draw cards. And so, like, stuff sketch time, stuff like painter running it off affinity, 
Um, just caring about draw triggers, you could probably do some cool stuff with this. I'm sure it'll find other homes. And the fact that this is just such a cool meme that it could actually find a home in decks that are both on the casual and po potentially competitive cube legacy side of the spectrum, I think that's just just a hit. Empty, what do you way, think of this? Don't put this card into your cubes. Never do so. It will never <laughs> be picked. It's a high synergy card. Yeah. Except if you're building your cube with extremely niche, high synergy decks that get drafted once in a blue moon, you never do this. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is sort of a meme card, but it's also one that like actually works and has a place in Legacy right now and might have a place in Standard later. So I'm all for it. It seems really fun. <laughs> okay. So that's good. So yeah, uh, uh, yeah, I'm going to be in a weird place where... Go upvote this card because it has my art on it. Uh, See worse arguments. <laughs> the Scurrying Ghost is a three-drop neutral 5-4 ghost with Ethereal. That's the whole text, folks. Ethereal, for those of you who don't remember, banish this card at the end of the turn if it's still in your hand. So one obvious problem I got to point out is the resident flavor nitpicker. We don't use ghost as a tribe. All of our ghosts are specters. And we kind of want that to be a specter if we're going to have any sort of hope of synergy with this card. Now let's talk about why it's bad. And I'm actually going to let uh, grief take the wheel in explaining why this card is an issue. This is a straight up ripoff. Mm. Is it? Of course, it's from Runeterra. Ah, I see. It's from the Legends of Runeterra game because there is an exact card copy of it that basically does the same for base st for the same stats and cost, if I remember correctly. And it's from my. Uh, I, I'm not sure you are remembering correctly because I, I played Runeterra a good deal and I do not remember this card. It's a shadow. Oh, so that <laughs> does have ethereal. But Ethereal and Runeterra and Ethereal and Collective aren't the same thing. They're completely you know different. What? The thing is, just because of semantics of no, let's be honest, it's a fucking shadow unit. <laughs> it's the big shadow bleed stick unit that dies after it deals damage. Okay, that was but... there since the beginning of the game. <laughs> yeah, so the reasons I don't like this card um, is because this is just going to end up eating... So if it's in your opening hand, you have to mulligan it away and, and whatever. Sure. Dead card in your opening hand. If you draw into it after your mulligan or on the first two turns, it's eating a card. Then if, if you draw this on turn three, which is your wonder scenario, you have an overstated vanilla. I don't, I don't think there's a good scenario for this card. Empty, what do you think? Uh, there really isn't, and the overset vanilla is, um, like, it's just not a good vanilla. Honestly, if you just took vanilla scoop wing and gave it plus one attack, I don't think you would be breaking any metas. Like, that's still not really a good card. And in order to play that card, you're basically risking that during the first two turns of the game, you can just randomly draw this and lose one CA for just being unlucky which is um, not good. This card will never be played outside of Pearl Mall, by the way, because she's the only one that could actually play this on turn two. Yeah. And that's, that's the thing, is I just don't think there's a real place for it. I think that's the issue is I, I, I don't... Not to criticize Monsterland in a harsh way, I, I feel like you got to take this and sit down and say... What do I want to happen when someone plays this card? Then you got to ask yourself, how likely is that to happen? Then you got to ask yourself, if that doesn't happen, what does this card do? <laughs> and then all of those, all of those questions have bad answers. Like, there's none of those questions that has a good answer. Or grief, what do you think? Is there something I'm missing in Legacy or something? No, I don't like that card. It's completely <laughs> garbage, but okay. <laughs> I mean, it's I, all points were made. I don't like the uh, I don't like the feeling of extreme familiarity from the uh, from Legends of Frontera. 
it is completely and utterly useless outside of one specific hero when you draw it as soon as turn two. Um, yeah, this is just straight up a bad design. I'm sorry, the thing is to actually save it is to make it a two cost and uh, downscale the entire stats. And then we have an overstated two cost unit and we're trying to dial back our removal suit. Uh, it's kind of, yeah, why the fuck does it exist? Well, well I, I wanted this to be an advice column and for us to think yeah. about kind of what, what it's doing wrong and, and what sort of advice. So look at tribes, obviously. And then just think about the play pattern. I, I don't care. The thing is, that's your point. I don't care about well, the tribe. Well, maybe you could use a, a useful tribe. Maybe that could be the, you know, maybe not Spectre. Maybe something else. This actually does make the most sense in Spectre, since they yeah. can discard it to sort of negate the downside. Yeah. But even then, like, yeah, I wouldn't want to run it in Spectre. Yeah. So there, there's just some thoughts. Make it I just software. Wanted... <laughs> Make it a software, yeah, no. Call, call it vaporware and that's it. That is a good idea. Okay, let's go. Colt, all bark, is a four drop spirit three five dealing warrior from Sweatlow with regenerate and your opponent's actions can only target this. Uh, one reason I like this is because it's an angry doodle man and uh, Excalibur, I don't know. Um, I like angry doodle man. Second of all, this is blocked wrong. <laughs> and let me tell you why this is blocked wrong. And let me give, the, this is going to go advice column mode. Come. Whenever you are thinking about an ability that references the card itself, what you want to go is you want to go on collective.com, search for every card I've ever made and debate how many cards, or, or think about the ways you could use it to break it. Because this, when it says your opponent's action can target only target this, is searching for cards named Colt Allbark. Oh. <laughs> so, things that break this. Massive many men. <laughs> Ancestral power. Um, any other card that makes mutants, which there are a couple. <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot of things that this ability, um, you got to kind of look at something like, say, Loudmouth or whatever. Besides that, I think this is an interesting effect, but I don't really know what um, place this has. I don't really know too much. I just wanted to hear you guys talk about this, really. Grief, what do you think of this? What is this week? <laughs> Why do we have these kinds of cards? I mean, I can see the I can see the thought process behind it. I can, but I cannot really see the usefulness of this kind of card. Sure, it shuts down um, certain it shuts down certain interaction, uh, certain interactions, and is extremely resilient to a rebalanced suit of uh, target removal. Um, and sure, it eats up any kind of buffs, so it's pretty decent. Uh, it's a pretty decent effect for this kind of effect, but our engine doesn't support these kinds of effects, at least correctly. Well, yeah, are you running into problems where, like, if you have two, even if it did search for this card's name, like, use this card's name as a property, you run into the problem, what if you can get two copies of this effect on cards with different names? Then, oh, all of a sudden all actions are shut off. Which could be cool. That could be a good counter, I think, to action hate. Um, but I don't know. I don't know too much about dealing. So, MT, what do you think of this? I think we're actually at the point where there is enough action hate in standard, and we don't really need any more. Mm -hmm. uh, this is very similar to the uh, one wing gorilla, but like even crueler against. A lot of decks, like if you're running an equipment deck and you run into this, yeah, you just lose. There is not much you can do against this thing because a lot of the equipment's deck removal is uh, requires you to target your own units. It has like time to do own stuff, um, so that's pretty rough. Yeah, I I don't really like this card um, for that reason and because like the blocking is going to cause problems and be messy. You really just can't do this type of effect without causing some issues. Okay. All in is a 10 cost action from Wonderstar Casino with 
Play a gambler of your choice from your deck. This costs one less for each star chip you have played this game. Um, I think this is cute. This is really reminiscent of the old legacy, some of the shenanigans they used to do with star chips, and this kind of it's in an interesting spot because it solidifies a very specific game plan. I think at the moment we would like to see maybe one or two more high cost gamblers in order to make this work, but um i wanted to talk to grief about what he what role he he thinks this would play in the game by the way i do do want to first of all stop for a moment and encourage everyone to appreciate the art first obviously and then the flavor text is just adorable um <laughs> uh grief go okay um I personally love this kind of uh, love this kind of payoff and legacy support. On the other hand, I'm extremely reminded of when Konami always does the Yu-Gi-Oh legacy support sets, where a deck archetype or card type that hasn't been that hasn't seen the light of day for the last freaking fifteen years gets some kind of support and be like, "What the fuck? Oh yeah, that existed way back when when I was five years old." <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm basically getting the same feel for most cards in this week, <laughs> all in included. I don't know how to I don't know how to actually um, evaluate it because you got um, Dave, you got the uh, one drop, you got the um, was did Fast Three create starships? I I can't I can't remember right now. You got the little ace does. The little ace does. I think you have to see this in practice how good this is, because as you mentioned, even our top end gambler suit um, doesn't really hit the numbers uh, right now to make this a worthwhile payoff. At least in my opinion, for now, because as I said, I don't have a clue how to evaluate this card right now i like the entire bombast of it of yeah at least playing 10 uh 10 starships which is kind of easy to do even with uh even if you're just playing six or so you have a tutor for any gambler in your deck and the tutor effect's not to be underestimated and you don't got to get it all the way to zero right you could play seven or whatever but and don't forget it actually hard plays the card so it also yeah. triggers summon effects mm. It is a very strong card, but for me, it's currently harder to evaluate how the deck plays in that case. Yeah, and I think this is, uh, especially with rotation coming up, if we want to look at it in like a standard context, it is reliant on new gamblers coming out that are impactful and create star chips, which is a little more narrow. Um, Empty, what do you think? Yeah, so for Sander, there's just not enough Starship generation to play this at all. Um, and honestly, that's kind of my problem with the card is that this requires uh, more Starship support being made for Standard. And I don't like Starships, especially now when we have uh, two XP Bird Doctors landing a ping off a Starship versus hitting your opponent's face has never mattered more. Like that will decide a lot of games if we get early star chip support. And yeah, like that's basically it. This is clearly meant to uh, synergize with the big like gambler that uh, is on the sub this week, the legendary. Um, and if both of those get in, like that'll be a fairly interesting package for legacy. But I'm not all that thrilled to uh, see starships making a return in standard if that's what's going to happen. I think this is cute and goofy, and I, I do oh, I like the, uh, the the sort of the casual play this could potentially create, but I'm still in the place where it's like, I don't really know what the big top end, because it relies so specifically on that tribe and that card, even though it's a token. The I mean, yeah, the I, I don't have any problems with the card itself. Like, I really like this design. It's just the cards that I know it synergizes with that I don't want to see. Like, like, if you change the tribe out and the token out, you might like it more. But <laughs> we, we need to just do a cycle of these, and one of them is going to be, like, uh, Elemental and Glowstone or 
and check your graveyard and uh, oh man the return of glowstones that would be <laughs> as i said is this is this are we sponsored by konami now do we do uh legacy of the duelist sets now um can I get my Toon Chaos and uh, Collective? <laughs> I'm just asking for a friend. <laughs> We're going to have one that's uh, a shapeshifter and checks your uh, mutants in play. And then <laughs> just a bunch of very, just a bunch of like rearrangements, uh, just a, a, a Mad Libs version of this card and uh, fill it out as many times as we can where it makes sense. <laughs> uh, uh, Broken Binary is a two drop mine software from Mortstall, Realm of the Dead Things. With counter, the next card your opponent plays and return it to hand and gain two EXP. Grief, didn't we talk about this last week? I don't remember. Oh. Oh, it? that's right. I wasn't there last week. Yeah, this was on your picks, dude. Grief just really <laughs> likes this card. MT, we're going to give you a chance to talk about it. It's your show now. Go. I don't have that much to say about it. it it's Can like one of these soft effects. <laughs> Shit. Actually, I just wanted to hear uh, uh, Empty's uh, take on the card. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> no, Grief, do this. We got to do this. <laughs> Go I for mean, it, it, it basically just uh, you take your opponent's uh, lowest cost card in hand and they lose mana equal to that card's cost. Like that's basically what it does. And right now, um, like everyone is running Wisp and Bucket. So this isn't very good in the current meta because everyone has a million zero cost things. Oh, and also uh, Ring the Bell is pretty popular too. But and in rotation, it might be okay. That's all I have to say. <laughs> okay, good, good. Um, well, it does gain you an EXP. It's an EXP gain card. I don't know. So, folks, now we had the standard play opinion. Because there, I was yeah, asked about yeah, we had that. We had that one. The one one person who didn't uh, get to speak. <laughs> okay, let's get weird. With the damned is a nine drop mind exclusive five five horror nightmare human titan from nowhere in particular. With can't attack ambush flying ward and when another unit leaves play duel the opponent. I feel like this card was assembled by a random word gen or a, a random sentence generator. First of all, the four tribes are just just put whatever you think goes. Um, there's no realm despite this thing having a weird niche match with four tribes. It kind of like and like an explanation. I don't. It, I guess it's just sitting there being a being a big scary. It has flying for some reason. And then so the big point is that last ability. The only thing on there that doesn't look like it was just made by word salad. When another unit leaves play, duel the opponent. That kind of thing, I feel like I could do some really, really dangerous damage with that kind of thing. So this is a weird combination of just totally baffling from a flavor standpoint. The first part is just a little goofy from a mechanical standpoint. And then that last ability says if you could do anything with this thing, you're going to win. So I, I think I know the answer to this, but Grief, want to tell me why this is sitting at zero? Um, I can tell you because it's one of the worst cards we had today. Um, Sorry, Magneter. We, we still love you. The thing, <laughs> is why I, the thing is, I didn't pick it for the design, but to showcase, yeah, we now have the drafting parrot that can post the cards for you. Oh, I see. Because the card is actually posted by the drafting parrot bot mm. on the alt collective server. So people on the alt collective server can now, if they have no access to Reddit, push basically their card that they want to publish on the uh, on the uh, subreddit via the uh, via the uh, via the uh, draft um, parrot bot. Grief, yes. who put this wonderful thing together and we should give them credit. Service doors. Check Seven. out Service. Thank you uh, so check out much Seven's for giving players creations. who don't have Reddit a means to post stuff. Okay. So check, uh, check out Service other creations, like the new deck builder he's working on. He's also trying to figure out together with our council member. That's your cue. Me. 
Yeah, that's your cue. Oh yeah, I... yeah. So what we're doing is we're getting card data so we can analyze stuff so that we can get a better idea of what cards need buffs or nerfs or maybe even buffs, right? Because we can now get we're going to be able to get some more granular data on stuff like play rates and some other interesting stuff. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I'm a, I'm a professional data scientist. It's my job. Um, but yeah, so the card itself. So yeah, the card itself, it's a scrambled egg and, bat, uh, and badly for any kind of environment. Yeah, you can probably put it into a queue, but that means you have to actually get rid of the exclusivity at nine mana, uh, nine mana for a 5-5 five, five body that basically does jack shit. This is kind of really hilariously bad. The jumbled mess on uh, on the timeline, I don't know why this was actually created. Maybe Magnifico just hit random and whatever, and this is a face model design that wouldn't be so, too surprising. Um, which means, okay, this is basically a bot-created card posted by a bot. <laughs> cool we're now replaced um <clears throat> all uh, all that together i have to just say something what the fuck magneto why <laughs> md what do you think of this and uh i just don't understand these keywords they just don't make any sense on this ward makes sense Word Damn does make you. sense. That's the only Damn thing that know. makes sense. I would almost argue for counterattack. Ambush and flying is weird, especially with the art. I mean, if um, you just have Ward, you can probably put this out of common. Uh, yeah. I mean, there is, like, it would be sort of interesting to build a combo deck around this. Um, it's just king combo, dude. Yeah. It's, it's not a new combo deck it's a combo deck that's existed for a long time <laughs> this is just now king combo has an additional redundancy piece that costs nine mana to get out. <laughs> well i mean that's the thing that would make it like more balanced i guess is that you have to do this really late game but it'd probably make it pretty bad <laughs> But th that's the thing is it's it's all or nothing it's feast or famine if it does anything it, it it's gonna it's gonna win right yeah it's I mean, your, the, the it's way sure you run I'm... this is you put yourself in a position where it has to win but pretty much that's almost impossible to do well it's like grave rave is not exclusive uh, oh no i i know what you run with this uh you run uh void storage because yeah. that's one mana and it lets you return your whole board to your hand so you get out like a bunch of zero cost stuff and then you play void storage and return five units and then that's five triggers on this for lethal. Or you just run two of the kitty cats. Kitty cat, kitty cat. <laughs> yeah, but that's legacy. In, void in storage is standard. Side card oh. just puts three cards together on the field or stuff like that. Or we can ah, yeah, all. it's massive. <laughs> 15 damage to face. I mean, that's also possible. Already, but yeah, what the fuck is this card? Oh, oh. No, it's even better with mass because this doesn't have untar, it just has ward. Yeah. So you could give this even more nonsense keywords. <laughs> have it trigger off itself leaving. No, I don't know. Yeah. This, this, oh, yeah, this, yeah, more, this card is more confusing than confusing copy pasta. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I think we're done. We need to be nicer to Magneto. He's done he's he's done things to deserve it, but he doesn't maybe deserve so much. Um, <laughs> I'm not going to say you did nothing to deserve it, okay? Magneter, it's not the case that you did nothing to deserve it. <laughs> okay, the Rundown Revisitor is a two-drop mine zero three Vampire Artisan from Tutela with Unblockable, and at the end of turn, shuffle four bags into your deck. A goods bag, which is what a bags is, is uh, artifact equipment, one cost, permanently, but not that it matters, Permanently give an allied unit plus one, plus one. And when this is drawn, play this, then draw a card. So this is a trap, but a good trap. It's a trap that works in your deck and a trap that gives you a good um, effect. However, like the thing that weirds me out is this is an equipment in a mind deck. But besides that, setting all that aside, I'm sure there's something to run this in. Empty, um, I want you to talk about this first though, because Greece has been having too many first turns. I would love to see a, a mind equipment deck. It would this, be cool. This isn't really working that though because um, it's force play, so it doesn't do any triggers. So if there's any equipment synergy, it doesn't really work. Um, 
I mean, this is like fine. No, well, they, it's for no, it's force play, so it should trigger. Oh no, that won't. Oh. No, it doesn't work. Yeah. Um. Honestly, the only problem I have with this card is I feel like um, the choose windows on the goods bag are going to get kind of ridiculous after a while because it's four per turn. And if you're running some sort of synergy deck where you like try and draw all of these, it's going to take a really long time to uh, run through all the goods bags when you draw them. I would really like it if it had like auto targeting. Uh, auto target, like I think lowest attack would be cool. Yeah, it would make sense with this too, since it would automatically buff buffing it up as, as unblockable. Yeah, so I think that would make it a little more coherent. And then once this got big enough, it would start targeting your other things. That does put you in sort of a weird position, but uh, I think that could work. I don't know. Um, Maybe you could add like one or two more if that's the case, because it is a nerf. Yeah, and then some stuff that just cared about, yeah. I don't know. There's maybe some stuff to do with this. Grief, what do you think of this? I mean, pretty cool spam kind of card where at the end of the turn, even if you uh, even if you actually increase the size of uh, of your deck, this changes uh, this changes uh, this chains into other copies of itself. So it is basically no and it's basically no downside. You can even use this in a control deck, by the way, where you have a pretty high um, high quantity of control cards that either. Uh, allow you to draw more cards, etc., or uh, try to uh, go for the one for one trades and keeping this as your only unit that you want to protect. Because, yeah, having a second one, uh, a second copy of this on the board, now you have eight cards in your deck. Just make sure you draw any of these and they chain into more draws, basically only buffing your unblockable youths. So, any combat where these dudes, uh, where these um, rundowns don't get removed, they just grow in size. So they even have like pseudo, and uh, they even have like pseudo regenerate. On top of that, these stats are permanent. Yeah. In that case, I don't. This is probably one of the most playable cards we had this week. For <laughs> so I personally want to see how this uh, how this turns out, and it has actually some pretty interesting relevant tribes on it. So let's see how this moves forward. Well, I'd say relevant tribes, at least artisan, but um, one of those tribes yeah. is vampire in a mind. So I mean, we have the bullshit mechanic called shapeshift, so I don't really see too much of an issue. <laughs> Okie dokie then. The uh, big redacted is a four drop neutral one four human organization from nowhere in particular. With end of turn, if you control four more humans, opponent loses one max mana. So um, obviously, my, my biggest complaint, I, I, I like the effect. My biggest complaints about our, our flavor. First of all, why is this evil Bernie Sanders? And second of all, <laughs> um, I don't know. I suggested a realm, and Plopka didn't like my realm suggestion. Makes me sad. Let's talk about this, though. This is human, like, human tribal. I can get behind this. Yeah. Um, Obviously, you know, you get in a weird place whenever you reference specific, you know, we've always had this weird relationship with not having a whole lot of tribal synergy, but we're, we're, it's coming back. The ecosystem is healing. Um, this has been like many, many months in the making. I don't know why I'm saying it like it's a new thing. Um, I love the art. I, even though, you know, evil Bernie Sanders makes me sad. Um, what can you do with this though? Empty, I'll let you go first. Uh, you just sort of run in Lazaro humans. Um, yeah. It makes Lazaro humans a deck. It already is. Surprisingly oh, it already enough. Is. It's kind of carried by the fact that you can play Ring the Bell and then gain 2 XP on turn 1, which is just broken. And everyone's running Wisp so that they can do that. Um, but Ring the Bell is rotating, so it'll be in an interesting place after rotation. Um, and one problem with this card actually is that I think it might be, well, it's not going to be too strong right now. Um, I think once we're finished going through the removal suite uh, and like nerfing everything, I think this may be too strong as an engine card because it's going to be a lot harder to interact with your opponent's board, and especially something like this with four health, um, that it may end up locking your opponents down too often. 
Yeah, because this can be pretty aggressive if you do something with it. I could also just see for the hell of it running a uh, art of replication with it because I don't think yeah both of those are ads tribes, so you can yeah I mean it's it's very easy to shut down your opponent once you like get this running because it's going to be harder and harder for them to deal with it. Yeah, um, grief. What do you think of this? Just a stall card and um, just a stacks card that you want to put uh, put into the lesser uh, humans. Basically, that's it. Um, it's pretty easy to do with Shapeshift uh, Enabler spot. Thankfully, we're probably removing Shapeshift from the Wisp, so it's only a zero cost one one, which is fine. Um, uh, that update it probably isn't getting in this week. <laughs> Big week for updates. Does you fold? <laughs> um, I said that I just I personally like stacks pieces. This is a slower rob tax collector so sure mm -hmm. um it makes sure that your opponent continuously loses max mana meaning they are basically stalled at one specific mana uh, point because whenever they lose max mana they also gain one so it means when you play this on turn four and at the end of the turn they still stay at four mana and this will continue on until this card is removed um yeah i think it's a okay, it will probably be extremely obnoxious when you hit a ring the bell and a human on turn two, and maybe play this in. You can maybe even try this out in Permo and try to play him as soon as turn three after that specific setup. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I don't know. Interesting idea. Um, we'll see where it goes. The Angelic Arbiter is a 5-drop strength 4-4 four, four Angel Knight from nowhere in particular with flying and summon. Your opponent loses 3 mana this turn. So it does a whole bunch on the coin and a whole bunch not when you're not on the coin or if your opponent's playing a bunch of like low-cost stuff. Um, I know people have been making the push for angels. I think we may have inadvertently helped steer that discussion via our platform, but um, it's cool. I ain't complaining. Uh I really like what Cornmeal's been doing here, contributing to this new potential archetype. It's a thing with wings and it has flying, so I can't complain about flavor this time. Um, <laughs> so this is kind of stacky. This is kind of cool. Empty, talk to me about what you think about this card. Yeah, this is a functional reprint of a card in standard that I used to really love, which was Thief of Pope. So I love to have effects like this uh, back in the game. It's always so cool, like you set up the board uh, off initiative so that like on initiative you can play this and stop your opponent from removing your stuff or board clearing, and then you can swing in for lethal or to just get a huge chunk out of their life. It's a really cool play pattern that used to exist with Thief of Pope, and yeah, I want to see it again. And then of course, um, this is support for the Angel Tribal, which it has like, there's not very many actual... Uh, Synergy cards with angels right now. I think there's only one. It's like the little scribe. Um, but yeah, I mean, more angels is sort of the first step for turning that into an art. Yeah, you need mass. You need yeah. just critical mass. And then you can actually start building something cool with it. And it's a knight, which is cool. Grief, what do you think of this? Um, I mean, it's just a Tifa Hope that flies. I like Tifa Hope, as MTO already mentioned. Um, because it's just a, it's just a good card to run. The thing is, though, it works better on the initiative, as you already mentioned. So yeah. yeah, I think this is just legacy support in this case, like tax collector, thief of hope. This all on initiative in promo, and trying to basically stack out your opponent to the point where you have a board they don't because all your uh, units actually drain their mana and you generate it just as by keeping up one. So that will be fun to see um, outside of that. I mean, it's a flying 4-4 four, uh, four, four that beats face. Why not? <laughs> Okie dokie then. Helps when I hit the right buttons. Data Corruption is a two drop mind malware from Mordstall, Realm of the Dead Things, would deal two damage to an enemy unit or silence a card in your opponent's hand. If it's an action, banish it. 
So we got two modes, both of which are actually really cute. So the silence basically is a slightly more annoying discard, unless it's a unit, in which case you could play out of vanilla, but you're probably not going to do that. Or it's steal two damage. And then, oh, oh, so it silences if it's unit, if it's actually just straight banish it, which kind of helps you. Okay. Um, very, very cute, definitely, from a uh, flavor perspective. From a mechanics perspective and kind of a position in standard, I know people have been expressing a lot of concern about where the removal suite's at, but this is a hand interaction thing. So how do we feel about this? Grief, I know, I, I think I, I anticipate where you're going with this, but uh, what do you think of this card? Love this card, but it's damn freaking powerful. <laughs> um, yeah, probably a bit powerful. Like it makes units kind of unplayable when they have more, uh, when you have a valuable effect for a specific cost range and no stats to show up. And straight up banishes actions, which is, I think, fine in my opinion um, for two mana hand disruption. But the weirdest part is it also doubles as two dam as a two damage ping board. In all honesty, this should either be only hand disruption or be a ping that also silences. But at that point, is two cost correct? It does so much for the cost strain it's actually presented by. So there is a mode too. Uh, there is a mode too much on it for its cost and the idea of rebalancing uh, our removal suit. And for the first time, I'm going to do the flavor sharking, especially since we're trying to push for more software and mal malware being basically useless garbage that is only created by uh, dialogues, which are bi uh, basically unplayable besides the stacks pieces. Um, can we do this as a software? The corruption has spread. No, <laughs> grief's doing it now. And I said malware. I said malware with some emphasis to make sure we were all on that. And I'm glad to see we were on the same page. Uh, the thing is, I've seen too many malware cards this week on the uh, on the on the uh, <laughs> on the subreddit. Where I, said, I would appreciate this more as this would be software because now we have support for it. <laughs> Step one, get one package going. Step two, maybe consider diverging them into two different packages. Got to do the first thing first. Package, ah, it's a software pun. Empty, your turn. Go talk. Yeah, I really like this card design, but this needs to cost three mana or like have some sort of nerf, especially if you're giving it the software tribe, which uh, opens it up to being reduced even further by Python. This is just too strong at two mana. And then it, it sort of flies in the face of the like whole removal toning down initiative that we're doing right now. That's what I was this thinking. This is pretty, yeah. yeah, this is pretty insane. Yeah. Way too flexible. Yeah. Okie dokie then. So that's that's why it's sitting at one or zero. Um, so there's some information. Okie dokie. The mine coil. <laughs> It is a one-drop mind malware <laughs> malware from Mort Stahl, Realm of the Dead Things. With a look at the top two actions of your deck, choose one to draw, mill the other. Fact-wise, cute. Now here, we could definitely put software on it because it's only getting reduced up to once. So like, come on, guys. Come on. Um, uh, and then the effect-wise... Well, it's kind of like a pseudo tutor type thing, but like tutor light. Um, pretty good in an action based deck. I think this is cute. Grief, what do you think of this? Um, I like the thing is, look at the top two actions of your deck. So it filters already uh, the top two cards of your deck. And if you're playing a very low action count, this is a pseudo tutor. Um, on the other hand, this is kind of quote-unquote better-ish scenario-based golden ticket mm -hmm. which looks at the top three cards of your deck you can pick one of them and the rest is milled this specifically looks at the top two actions as i said it filters through every other option until it hits two actions that it can actually pick from so this can be a combo enabler love that 
especially with the part where you can pitch actions, uh, pitch actions that want to be pitched. So you can technically, if this would have been chroma green, or if you are, uh, it is a spirit of you are, you could even do this with the um, XP gaining action yeah, that uh, when it is pitched into the graveyard, you can. Uh, you get X XP or with rebound, uh, action, not rebound actions, but actions that return from the uh, from the graveyard to hand, like the uh, Spectre, uh, the Spook Blast card, if you actually uh, draw, and so on and so forth. Um, I like that design direction. But if if it wouldn't be a malware, then I would even love it more. <laughs> Well, no, jokes aside, I mean, if we're really going for the divergence in malware software, then let's also fucking add hardware to it because this is actually <laughs> hardware. And now we can actually do it like this way. We have hardware cards that support software cards. Software cards download themselves. Hardware cards enable software and malware are always harmful to the opponent, but are only generated as tokens. Now we have a deck package. <laughs> yeah so doing this you have a chance of mind coiling into your mind coil and then you just keep on going and then you have a chance to like mill stuff and this i don't know this got some cuteness to it empty what do you think yeah i really like this card um like grief brought up uh this is great as a, an action tutor especially because like if you do get that scenario where like you hit your own mind coil like you just play it again and get your tutor anyway. Uh, the other thing is um, like post rotation, uh, we're going to need a new package for uh, Rick so they can actually get his XP procs. Um, please don't do pings again. <laughs> that was horrible. Uh, I would love to have um, stuff like this where you sort of have a deck filtering package instead for uh, Rick. That makes it easy for him to get his triggers and like filter stuff through his hand. I think there's a lot of opportunity to make something interesting. And then you could maybe have like, so, and that would kind of give us like the board based version and whatever the in the new hero. And then you'd have like the action based version in the uh, other thing because you have. Yeah. Like, um... yeah, this works pretty well in the new hero too. And yeah. honestly, anything cheap that can get a card in your hand. Mm -hmm. Okie dokie then. Final card for the week, The Solver is a one-drop neutral 1-1 one, one robot from Morsal, Realm of the Dead Things, with Deadly <laughs> Overrun and Frenzy 1. I missed that pick. How, why did you... <laughs> <laughs> it's I a slow <laughs> week. This is interesting. <laughs> you know how I hate it when we pick my cards. <laughs> so, that's a lot on a one-drop. I can see why that doesn't really matter because this is all still it's just one drop. Um, I can see putting this into uh, what do you call it? Uh, maybe even uh, the one one cost uh, Mook Matters thing in uh, the the Black Rift Mistfist. Yeah, the Mistfist. This would be a cool target for Mistfist. I call the deck Mook Matters because it, it it focuses on having a bunch of little Mooks and you just <laughs> um. But yeah, the one cost thing, uh, obviously this is just, just just a solid one drop. Uh, empty, I know I haven't been giving you a whole lot of turns, but this is Grief's card. So oh, yeah. I, I, I want Grief to talk about it first. Grief, Grief. Talk, tell me about the design process behind this card. <laughs> okay. The conception of this card, the solver, it is kind of a meme in the cube community because it was actually initially created for a cube that I had in mind, which was more of a uh, archetype showcase with some filler cards. And the solver was a filler card that actually fought against certain stuff in that specific cube. Because, yeah, if you've got a board based issue, he solves this for he solves it for you. He may look extremely strong on paper, and he is kind of quotations kind of the worst. Uh, the worst comment that I've read after posting this card for shits and giggles because I didn't really, as I said, this is an in joke card. Um, um, the thing was, I read Pignito's comment under it like yeah, it is a very elaborate way to write unblockable. I was like. 
dude, you're absolutely missing the point with this. <laughs> um, this is not straight up unmovable. It was one of the most annoyingly, um, most annoying attackers and uh, defender uh, defending units that you can face as a board based deck because you cannot block this thing because any kind of blocker is dead unless it actually has uh, unless it has actually fr uh, freaking um, effects that a remove the uh, remove the keywords on this card because frenzy pops ward first. Also, the frenzy would uh, frenzy would pop the ward because the frenzy trigger would actually trigger deadly. So the frenzy trigger goes first, pops the ward, then it hits and kills the unit. Since does, the, uh, you can't since... trade with them uh, with uh, ward. Yeah, you can trade with it, so it's not straight unblockable, right? So ward units yeah. can kill this thing. The ward units can kill this thing, but they die with it. Yeah. Um, as I said, it is basically just there to solve board. Uh, board scenarios, yeah. and you cannot really attack into it. Yeah, sure. It has fr a frenzy, which is only for uh, for attacking. But on an uh, on a defensive, yeah, this is a one one that blocks anything to death. Mm. Why should we attack into that? Um, and with the uh, with the uh, with the thing that it has frenzy and overall deadly, after it kills something, it still hits you for one damage. But yeah, this is an overloaded snoop shoulder one drop. How the fuck did I come up with the idea? Have you forgotten that this thing has one HP and basically dies to everything if you just dies to a cough, yeah. At it. <laughs> so here I'm gonna sell this to those of you out here who mostly play single player and are and are just dorks like me. How cool would it be to win by playing about to snap on this guy? Just have this thing charge in, four attack, four HP. Just gonna run straight into battle, deadly overrun frenzy, hit your opponent for four, kill him. That's yeah. my dream scenario with Estella. Yeah. I am. I, I, you guys don't know. I, what maybe doing. I, maybe I should. Maybe I should have put some uh, some of the emotes in that I wanted to have planned. Like when this actually kills a uh, when this actually kills a player, like saying yeah, you got solved. <laughs> MD, what do you think of this design? I actually think people are maybe being too harsh on it. Yeah. Well, I think what a lot of people, like when you look at it initially, it does look really like overpowered, but it just, it kind of isn't. Like, <laughs> it's I mean, pretty well balanced, just, honestly. This thing, this thing doesn't even have agile or ambush. Sure, there's the yeah. agile and the ambush idea for the next tourney, but in that scenario, it's pretty cool. But still. <laughs> like, it's the Typhoid Rats. This is the Typhoid Rats. Nobody's looking yeah. at Typhoid Rats and saying, oh, it's busted. I mean, it is a deadly one one drop. And that only goes in certain environments. But it's, it's, I don't know. Guys, play around with it. Think. I don't know. I'm going to go up with this guy when I'm done. I think he's cute. <laughs> I do think that was our last card for the week. So I am going to halt the share. This was weird, guys. Come on. Um, I do appreciate, by the way, things I didn't mention. And Tropic, I saw you posted a whole slew of cards. A lot of rares. We only get two rares a week, buddy. But I I'm glad to see you posting and posting in volume. So just let you, I want to let you know you're seen. To everyone posting malwares, y'all are on <laughs> my bad list this week. Change them to software. You're backing the wrong Horace Midditz. Yeah, you're, yeah, you're you're on the wrong side of history, folks. <laughs> and then to everyone else, well, including you, Corn. We, we you, you know we like you, despite the things we say. Oh, <laughs> uh, this fun week. Thank you so much, Grief, for being on the show, and Empty for being on the show. Always like uh, to be here. <laughs> we're gonna find you some new adjectives, yeah. Empty. Don't worry about it. Um, <laughs> The not, the not full, yeah. yeah. The not full empty folder. Yeah. Um, <laughs> like, oh, you know, we're going to call this uh, on, on the teasers. We're going to put anti-malware and just people not knowing that we're anti-malware. <laughs> uh, like, comment, and subscribe uh, to remind me why exactly we continue to do this week after week. Uh, keep on uh, playing the game, Collective, and keep on voting on cards. Bye! Yeah, well.